going into the second phase lockdown is not a viable option for africa the vaccine is the best tool that we can have we have to start preparing for when we get those vaccines in terms of addressing vaccine hesitancy this is a problem that we need to really start to aggressively tackle so that when we get vaccine people are ready and willing and feel secure welcome to yet another covid 19 real life chat here on dw africa as always, I am your host, Josie Mahachi. Today, I am hosting the founder and CEO of Medicines for Africa, Lenius Wenda. So we are going to be discussing a lot of topics or issues, rather, to do with the vaccine. Is Africa ready for the vaccine? Will the vaccine be affordable? And how available is it going to be for everybody, especially those in the rural areas? In vaccine, Lenius, good evening and welcome to DW Africa. Thank you, Josie. It's a pleasure to join you. All right, so we are talking about the COVID-19 vaccine. I mean, the whole world is on its knees because of this particular virus. How has Africa performed um, to its response to COVID-19 and how has it been different from how other parts of the world responded? Well, thank you, Jose. Um, Africa responded very well uh, to COVID because they went early and they went hard. And so what that early response uh, managed to do was to delay um, sustained community transmission across the region because there, was, there were effective contact tracing and testing very early on. Um, and as a result of that, Africa has recorded much fewer direct deaths as a result of COVID. Uh, but um, on the caveat is that there has been a lot more deaths resulting from COVID-related service disruptions of healthcare services. Testing was quite a challenge at the beginning because Africa was locked out of the supply chain for, for buying uh, test kits, for buying protection protective equipment for infection uh, prevention and control. But they've since rectified that with the um, African Union Agency for Health, the Africa CDC, that has instituted a platform for buying those things on a pooling basis, you know, combining for all of the countries and then distributing to everybody. Speaking of a burden, uh, Lenius, but then I think the burden we see it is not even going anywhere anytime soon. We're already seeing a phase two coming up in countries like Nigeria and South Africa. What can we expect and how do you think the phase two is going to be different um, from the phase one? And are countries pre preparing? Yes, yeah, so the, the, the phase two, it has already begun. Um, so in countries like Kenya, we are seeing already spikes in cases. And in terms of dealing with that, at the moment, countries have to continue to do the, you know, implement public health measures, preventing transmission uh, by testing and tracing and, and, and trying to mitigate um, the spread, you know, with social distancing and so forth, preventing death by, you know, continuing to, to, to make sure that there is protection for healthcare workers, you know, and all of those measures that can be put into place. And then, of course, there are um, aspects to minimize social and economic harm. But here's the thing, uh, Josie, going into the second phase, lockdown is not a viable option for Africa. When you think about the impact on healthcare services and, you know, th that has occurred just over the last 12 months. So um, it's very likely that lockdowns and social distances will simply not be enough going into the second phase given the massive impact with the with the disease burden that we have on the continent that has suffered so the vaccine that we have at the moment uh just to go back a moment uh it's from pfizer uh it's a, me a messenger rna and mrna vaccine. so that's the technology uh on which it was developed so it's a very fragile vaccine um, its logistics uh, and, and supply chain requirements, its storage requirements are very complex. complex. It requires ultra cold storage conditions of minus 70. So, so, 
So let me ask, when, when they were producing this particular vaccine, did they have Africa in mind? Well, I think uh, in developing the vaccine, I don't imagine that they had any, you know, scientists would have had any particular continent in mind. Of course, one has to think about, you know, how applicable or how practical that technology is in different settings. Uh, and for sure, this particular technology is not very amenable to to uh, resource limited settings of low and middle income countries. I mean, I can't really say whether they, they, they thought I had that much. I imagine that it, it would have been a case of what are the tools uh, do we have from which we can leverage to, to develop a vaccine and just going forward with whatever people have had. And there's been more than a hundred candidate vaccines. So I think scientists have been pretty much just using whatever technologies that they have and trying to adapt it and bring a vaccine as fast as possible. So then you mentioned that there are over 100 that they're trying to produce. So how many vaccines are likely to get licensed? And is Africa likely to still get? Yes. Yeah, so, so, you know, they, I think we, we are expecting that at least, um, you know, by early 2021, the leading candidates out of that, you know, not all of the 100 vaccines are at the same stages. So some vaccines are in advanced stages than others. And I think they, you know, the expectation is that they will be at least six that would be coming out. And the, out of those six, they are all coming uh, with offering different kinds of technologies. So you have a technology similar to the Pfizer and Moderna, um, the Pfizer that has just been uh, authorized, that mm -hmm. has just been given emergency use authorization in the UK. How safe are these vaccines? They need someone to explain to them and to convince them. So that's why we are here today. But then I want to also know from you what public health criteria is going to be used how are these vaccines going to be allocated fairly in the continent? Yes, yes. No, so first, you know, the thing to say is, look, I mean, these vaccines are being developed for following very rigorous methods, you know, uh, of, of evaluating the, their, their safety and efficacy. Of course, it's a pandemic, so that process is a little bit expedited, it's not following the normal timelines. There are risks, of course, in that you can't be 100% certain that this vaccine will um, behave a certain way in every single person. But in general, we've been vaccinating children for, for, for decades, so vaccines in general are safe. And any vaccine that is going to come to any country in the region will be evaluated by our own regulators. These are vaccines that are already being given to people. The UK is already vaccinating. The US is going to be vaccinating. All of those vaccinations, in fact, are going to be a continued rolling gathering of data in terms of understanding how that vaccine behaves in the population. The challenge that Africa might have is that we have not engaged quite as much in participating in clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the diversity of participants in these clinical trials is a challenge that is widely acknowledged even by industry leaders. Um, Paul Hudson from Sanofi was talking about these challenges and they're thinking about addressing those. Nevertheless, a vaccine, one of the scientific criteria is that it has to be tested within the population that it's going to be used. We just talked about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and yes. AstraZeneca, which predisposes people, which could predispose people, the technology in mm -hmm. the past have been shown to do that, to HIV infection. So that's one of the reasons why it is so important to have that vaccine tested in that population so that you can be sure you know you have the data about how it behaves in that population thank you so much Lenny. Has any closing remarks especially to those countries already in the second wave the thing to do right now um the vaccine is the best tool that we can have to to control transmission but it's not available so i think the thing to do right now is to continue 
to to implement to 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 um, execute the the public health control measures, social distancing, and those everything that we do would have to we just have to continue doing those things to limit transmission. And of course, um, starting to engage with communities, we have to start preparing for for getting that vaccine. Uh, for when we get those vaccines, in terms of addressing vaccine hesitancy, which is a problem actually in in even in Africa, people are already rejecting. HPV vaccine because of fears and, 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 and perceptions of the lack of safety. So this is a problem that we need to really start to aggressively tackle um, to address it so that when we get vaccine, people are ready and willing and feel secure to actually um, to take those vaccines going forward to help us to resume normal life and start to prevent the, the, all the impacts that we're seeing right now.